This is the story of the Silver Age of Comics in under six minutes. Superhero comics were at a low point between 1950 and 1956 due to the start of the Korean War, the lingering after effects of World War II, and other reasons. The great majority of hero books were canceled, and many publishers left the field. Other genres, such as crime, romance, and horror, rose to fill the hero's void. Many of these types were stifled by the creation of the Comics Code Authority in 1954. This led some publishers to return to their abandoned heroes. There are a few events worth mentioning which led into the Silver Age. It's worth noting that the only characters to have their titles appear continuously from the Golden Age into the Silver Age were Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman. May of 1952 marks the first true crossover, discounting team books and anthologies, when Batman appeared in Superman number 76. This was a vital step towards continuity in the DC Universe. In December of 1953, Marvel attempted a superhero revival, beginning with Young Men number 24, when they tried bringing back the Human Torch, the Submariner, and Captain America. Besides appearing in the anthology books, Young Men, and Men's Adventure, all three characters had their own titles revived, continuing numbering from the Golden Age. The experiment failed, and all of the titles died by 1955. In September of 1954, Superman spawned a family, beginning with Jimmy Olsen number one. Trying to capitalize on the popularity of the Superman TV series at the time, DC spun Superman off into several related titles, which would eventually grow to include Action Comics, Adventure Comics, Superman, World's Finest, Lois Lane, and Jimmy Olsen. This provided superheroes and DC with the momentum that would lead into the Silver Age. In November of 1955, Martian Manhunter debuted in the pages of Detective Comics number 225. He was the first new DC hero since the Golden Age. Some comic historians feel that this should mark the beginning of the Silver Age. However, this event doesn't relate as directly to the impending explosion of heroes as does the reappearance of the Flash a few months later. Most historians believe that the Silver Age started in September of 1956 when the Flash returned in the pages of Showcase number 4. The successful appearances of the Flash in Showcase 4, 8, 13, and 14 led to the Speedster once again receiving his own title and to the successful revivals of most of DC's popular Golden Age characters, many of whom also received their own titles. It's important to note that the Silver Age Flash has a different costume and origin and is a completely different character than the Golden Age Flash. The Silver Age is characterized by more realism in both characterization and setting. Revivals of Golden Age heroes played an important role at both Marvel and DC, as well as in the development of continuity. Continued stories eventually became the norm. In August of 1959, Archie introduced The Fly in The Fly No. 1 by Archie Publications. Archie became the first publisher to respond to DC's new success with superheroes by introducing The Fly, a hero with insect-like abilities. February of 1960 saw the Justice League appear in Brave and the Bold No. 28. The Silver Age version of the Justice Society proved that the team concept was just as successful in the Silver Age as it was in the Golden Age. September of 1961 saw the return of the Golden Age Flash in Flash number 123. This began one of the most significant trends in the Silver Age, the appearance of Golden Age characters in Silver Age continuity. November of 1961 was the beginning of the Marvel Age with the release of Fantastic Four number one. This began the then unique Marvel emphasis on the hero's characterization and realism, including an updated version of the Human Torch. The Submariner returned in issue number four. August of 1962 saw the debut of Spider-Man in Amazing Fantasy number 15. Historically, this is Marvel's most popular solo character. Few others have enjoyed the kind of continuous popularity that Spidey has, and he has been critical to Marvel's success. October of 1962 saw the release of Dr. Solar number 1 from Gold Key. Along with Companion Magnus, released in February of 1963, the character's unique blend of science fiction and superhero adventure has led it to be one of the few Silver Age characters successfully revived by a publisher other than Marvel or DC. Marvel solidified their popularity in September of 1963 with the release of both The Avengers 
and the Uncanny X-Men. Silver Surfer made his first appearance in March of 1966 within the pages of Fantastic Four number 48, Marvel's first and most famous cosmic hero. The Silver Surfer popularized a brand of superhero meets space opera that has since been used frequently in everything from the Avengers to Adam Morlock. 1966 saw the debut of the Batman television show, starring Adam West and Burt Ward. The success of the Batman TV show led to a small publishing boom in 1966. This rise in popularity gave Marvel the opportunity to expand its superhero line in 1968. And this has been the story of the Silver Age of Comics in under six minutes.